the 10th anniversary of Akshara and I'm going to take 10 minutes of your time to say a few words. Um, first of all, of course, it's a little difficult for me to be standing here as both someone from inside the Akshara family and outside of the family because it was Akshara's journey that actually taught me so much about uh, uh, some of the actual problems on the field and going into various places on Akshara's work really has taught me a lot and I owe a lot of debt of gratitude to Akshara's work and its vision. That's the first thing. Nija hello do andre actually Akshara kelsa Martha ne naanu kannada sariyagi all solpa kalt kondi dini anta hello bolu field ali hogi makkal jote teacher jote mathadi mathadi solpa yenu barate ashtu actually adunu Akshara ke ne credit kordbe ko so that's another thing um, I think one of the reasons that I moved on from Akshara is that I believe that institutions in this country do need to have fresh leadership and flesh, fresh blood flowing through them at periodic intervals. Ashok was of course already there and his vision for Akshara is different from mine though our core values are the same and I think sometimes when leaders hang on for too long the next generation's ideas don't get enough space so I'm very very glad Akshara uh, has been taken to a new level completely with its new team and I'm incredibly proud so heartiest congratulations to Akshara Foundation <laughs> and its leadership. Um, I want to say that one decade in a country seems like such a short time, but when it comes to the education sector, so much has happened in these 10 years that I feel all of us are very privileged to be journeying together in this space. I'll just take a couple of minutes to say what I think are the big changes that have happened in just one short decade. I think for one thing, first of all, the demand for education is clearly and finally and fundamentally established. And there are many reasons for that. First, of course, government. We can't leave out the role of government oh, since independence. Uh, though I wish in the first two decades much more had been done. We can't change the past, but every single day we see the downstream impacts of not having universalized primary education in 1947. Uh, be that as it may, over the last two, three decades, government has made significant strides. Um, never before has so much money been put into the education sector by government, and we are seeing the rollout and the benefit of that. NGOs have stepped up activities in the education sector so tremendously, so we should give that the credit. But in these 10 years, a um, lot of other things have also happened. The liberalization of the economy, whatever we may think about it, has had an impact on education. Our population <coughs> explosion has meant that people have been pushed out from old livelihoods, from farms, and ha had to look at new choices. I think parents have begun to finally see the end of the education tunnel and what it actually means. I think. Uh, the education sector has, in this one short decade, opened up to market forces as never before. Private players were there in education in some guise or the other, but today we are seeing that the explosion of demand, partly because of the failure of the public sector, but also because of the whole liberalized economy, private sector players are asking for their own space in the public sector. Um, we are also seeing that um, so th they really want to compete on their own, um, in their own space. I think the focus has clearly shifted from just enrollment to quality. It's not just the why anymore, but the how, and that is always a great, a great thing. I think, as I said, a lot of money flowing from the public sector, so a lot of opportunities, bipartisan support for the education agenda all across the country. And this has all happened in the short decade. It's like coming together. I think Akshara Foundation's journey has echoed that. Uh, Akshara Foundation moved from simple things like enrolling, building the quality of the demand, getting parents to understand, getting children into schools and learning centers, to actually doing supplementary work to the education sector and then working inside the system to make systemic improvements, also working with the private sector for the, where the schools for the poor were concerned, also looking at technologies, looking at all these things along with the changes of the decade. And I think a lot of the voluntary sector has been doing that. So I think uh, these are all positive things. But as always in India, Every time you say something positive, there's a flip side to the coin. And the fact remains that sometimes the more things change, the more they remain the same in terms of our problems. So the fact is that 
there are still so many people. This trickle down, as it has happened, has mostly happened to the middle class. And I don't need to tell this audience what is happening below that space. So the other day, I, t I was brutally reminded of it again when uh, about three days ago, I went into Pratham Books and Akshara and Pratham Books share the same office. And uh, Akshara has recently started a little learning center just in, our prem in the premises right there. And uh, of course, instead of going to the meeting, I went to this little cluster of children. And I sat there with them. And uh, these are children of construction workers. Um, the story is very familiar to you. But uh, little Ganesh, whom I met, very good looking boy, fourth standard from Gulbarga. His parents are building the house of somebody like us in Bangalore. And um, obviously, a child who knew how to read and everything and deserved to go now into the fifth standard very shortly. But the government school did not take him in because of a transfer certificate or something that was missing. Now, this is in spite of notifications by the government that no child should be left out of our school system. The reality is that Ganesh is not in a government school or in a private school, but in a learning center in the Akshara compound. And somehow it just broke my heart because after everything, after saying all those things that I said before, the story of Ganesh is repeated across the country every single day. We have 150 million migrants. We are now called, India is now a mobile republic. They are moving around. Sometimes their children are moving with them. What happens to those children? We have the Right to Education Act, but it seems to me that normative structures, questions of quality, don't sit quite so comfortably with questions of social inclusion. And that is something for us to really look at. But I think that there is a real opportunity here for the voluntary sector. And we must use this as a focal point to regroup our energies. Um, we all know that primary responsibility for government belongs to the state and there is no dilution in, of that. Nowhere in the world has it been possible to do it without the government. We also know that at least some of us believe that the markets have a role to play. They have some role to play in this space and in every space. And today the dominant paradigm in this country seems to be that bring in the market to, to, to complement the state's effort. There are some things the state can and must do. There are some things the market can do well. but there is a space below that where markets cannot go and where the state, unfortunately, is extremely ineffective. That is the space where civil society uh, institutions like Akshara and philanthropists have to come together to bridge that gap, that, that last mile where neither states nor markets are effective. And today that space in some cases is growing, like I said in the case of the migrant children um, and the impact that migrant uh, labor is having on families and children all across the country. We need to absolutely renew our efforts to work with those children who are left out in spite of everything that we have talked about. And um, so how do we do that, really? I think, uh, I think it seems to me that as we, civil society, of course, the rights-based perspective has always been what has made changes across the world in, in, in the last hundred years we have seen. All the progressive movements have come from civil society voices, have come, have redefined what human rights mean. And today, even with the child's right to education, there is still something left. And we have to introspect and we have to push forward. So having said that, I feel that what are the possibilities? The good thing is that I meet dozens of people every month who young people, you know, mostly young people, creative people who, have, who have a, seem to have a million ideas. Many of, I'm going to take a minute to tell you what some of these ideas are and the breadth and depth of those uh, possibilities. I've had people come to, come to me talking about how they want to set up hostels for girls. The girl child is still very much an issue for all of us. Uh, they want to set up hostels. Some of them want to uh, set up sports infrastructure. Some of them want to do technological innovations. Some of them want to create uh, uh, better uniforms. Some entrepreneur came to me saying, we are underestimating the problem of what footwear our children wear and why it's so toxic and how you can create a low, low cost uh, uh, shoe for children. 
every manner of idea apart from the usual stuff of how to in, uh, improve uh, learning out learning methodologies um, so i see lots of people uh, some people talking about nutrition and food in schools some people talking about other health related issues Ev so many people seem to be engaging with the question of children schooling and education in this country and that i think is really fantastic uh, there are others who are also coming to me with a very important not to me they're coming to everyone i happen to of some of these conversations um, about a very important thing which is beyond curriculum what education for what and how can we supplement the curriculum by saying where are the values today in today's context it becomes even more important what do we want our children to learn in this very fast changing global economy where will they anchor themselves in our society and our tradition i think those kinds of things where people want to do things with the school system is also incredibly important and sometimes not talked about so much in the media so for me all this is extremely exciting it means that the question of how to engage our young people is occupying a different set of people and i think we should embrace all these ideas i think the time for ideology is there but we have to be pragmatic we don't have that much time actually so i think all these things have to be embraced every idea is welcome whether we are going to do incremental change whether we are going to do totally disruptive change all that is welcome because of course the societal mission before us of every child in school and learning well is not yet over we have some ways to go and i think everyone has now understood the urgency of what is called the demographic dividend it's repeated too much i won't say it anymore but we have a short span of 15 years in 15 years our population begins to age and what we have done in these 15 years with our young people 50% of our population what have we equipped them with in terms of education and in terms of values is going to determine how india looks in 2025 they say it's a truism i repeat it that a school is the miniature of the nation's future but i think the entire education space is like that and we have to understand this and all of us journey with it because if it takes a village to raise a child it takes a whole nation to educate the last child 100 million children are waiting after this celebration of today is over we just have to go back to work there are no shortcuts i'm sure we'll all do it thank you very much Thank you very much, Rohini. As always, it's been a, it's a pleasure to listen to your insights. Uh, now that it's we have established that it's a birthday party, there has to be some kind of return gift, and uh, our return gift is the Bengaluru report card, which is actually a compilation of data that Akshara has collected over the last three years, detailing learning outcomes of children going to Balwadis, Anganwadis, and even government primary schools. It's quite a pioneering effort. and it also covers some insights into infrastructure the very things that the rte is looking at uh, of course we hope some day to bring out report cards pro progress reports for every district of karnataka but as of today the bengaluru report card is in front of you and i request rohini to open it up and hand it around to professor shanta sinha Thank you. Thank you. 